It's Vinegar Syndrome time! Hello, hello, and welcome to another Vinegar Syndrome unboxing. And this is one of the bigger ones. This is Black Friday, plus some VSUs and partner labels and stuff. Uh, but Black Friday is one of their two big yearly sales, and so I got my package that I can finally open. It actually shipped very quickly this year. I mean, I am a half half year subscriber, but it shipped on December 1st. I'm not getting it till today as I'm recording this, which is December 6th because FedEx sucks. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I have it. So, got my old scream knife, and let's open this sucker up. Put knife away for safety, and we'll get you the good stuff. But it looks like bubble wrapped. Looks like we got two big bubble wrap packages. So let's see what is in them. I say that as if I didn't order these and I know what I bought. All right, starting things off with uh, one of the biggies. This is, of course, Roadhouse. If you, if you know anything about movies, you, you know Roadhouse. It's the movie where Patrick Swayze is a bouncer and he solves all of the world's problems with roundhouse kicks. So uh, I assume, you know, because when Vinegar Syndrome has a deal with non-Amazon-owned MGM titles, uh, that this was uh, one of their more mainstreams that they could get. And so this is VSU number four, following Beastmaster, Six String Samurai, uh, Cloak and Dagger, and now Roadhouse. So this is the front of the bookcase here, which is... A little busy, but I think still pretty cool. You got the side over here, same there, and the back is a bit more uh, Swayze face. And like all of these VSUs, we got a little magnetic clip there. We got a bar open late. <laughs> and then the proper, oh, and on the inside of the book, we got a sign for the, the club in the movie, the double deuce. So this one, because it's a VSU, it has uh, a little book, so we got uh, the Swayze there. Uh, and the back of the book says, Dalton's the best bouncer in the business. His nights are filled with fast action, hot music, and beautiful women. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. So that's that, and and we have uh, oiled shirtless Swayze right there on the first page. But, uh, you know, these are pretty decent booklets when they uh, come with the movies. I enjoy reading them. So, inside of that, of course, we have the slipcover. So, front of the slipcover, I believe they use this for just the normal poster art. And then the same stuff that's on the back of the book is on here, except for there's also an exterior photo of the Double Deuce. And, of course, being a VSU, this is a 4K. I'm not sure if there's a loose disc in there or if it's just a little flappy thing inside there. So, Region A. Uh, well, 4K is, by its nature, unlocked, I think. I, I had heard that Scream slash Shout Factory had actually been region-locking their 4K disc, which is weird. But the, the, but the 4K disc is probably going to be region-free, I assume, because almost every 4K disc is. But the, the Blu-ray involved, uh, that will be region A locked. Uh, so let's see, what do we have for extras on this uh, big package? Uh, let's see, it is uh, newly restored from a 35mm OCN. Uh, we got a commentary track with the director and a commentary track with Kevin Smith and Scott Mosier. So uh, if you're a Kevin Smith fan, you got that going on. Uh, and then there's two Blu-ray discs outside of the 4K, which just has the movie and the commentaries. So uh, Blu-ray disc one is everything that's on the UHD, uh, but also uh, an interview with actor stuntman. Oh, they don't have the times on here. So the Vinegar Syndrome, Vinegar Syndrome had been putting the times of how long the extras are for a while, but not on the back here. Let's see, it's a new interview with the second unit director and stunt coordinator, same person. A uh, new interview with actress Laura Lee Kaysen. A uh, interview with actor Roger Hewlett. Uh, actor Travis McKenna, got an interview there, original trailer. And then uh, disc two has archival special features. I think, should Shout put this out? I think Shout had put this out at one point. Uh, but there's a documentary about the making of Roadhouse. There's a conversation with the director. Uh, let's see, there's a documentary, a little featurette about the stunts. Featurette about the music, uh, featurettes that's uh, in memoriam for Patrick Swayze, uh, another featurette that's just called On the Roadhouse, I don't know, and What Would Dalton Do, and a Patrick Swayze profile. I don't know what some of those last ones are, but it's been a, quite a long time since I've seen Roadhouse. Roadhouse is one of those movies that uh, 
my mother and my uncle, um, being children of the 60s who came of age in the 80s, uh, they seem to always watch this when it came on television. Plus, I, I think my mother is of the age that would find Patrick Swayze, like, God's gift to women, so. Um, I actually don't know if I've ever seen it unedited. I think I've only ever seen it edited for television, too, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it. But this did not come with the subscription because the VSUs, it's extra, but uh, Roadhouse. Got to put the booklet in there. I'm an idiot. Roadhouse. All right, next we have, uh, this was a partner label, so uh, in the month of November, uh, they, they don't announce all of the new titles until actual Black Friday weekend when the sale comes on. I mean, they, they do tell you what some of the titles are for, like, pre-orders and a couple of months early, but then there's secret titles and all that stuff. But they still, uh, they usually do partner labels launching on the first of the month, just like when they normally tell new titles. And so for November, even though they held back the regular titles until... Black Friday, they still released the November partner label titles on November 1st. So, order those, and they shipped with this. So, one of those is uh, Mind Field, which uh, looked like a cheesy science fiction movie that happens to have Michael Ironside as the star, so I figured, why not? I should probably get that. Oh, plus Christopher Plummer's in that, too. So, I think that's uh, him on the back there. Uh, what is this about? CIA mind control and shit? Yeah, fuck the CIA. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, this, it just... See, um, sci-fi schlock seems up my alley. Which, uh, which partner label did this? TVA Films? I don't even know who that is. All right, uh, <laughs> but it's from 1989. Uh, I don't see any region coding on it. Uh, but let's see. Extras, it is scanned in 2K from the 35mm positive. Uh, let's see, there's an audio commentary with, uh, Paul Karup of Canucksploitation.com and film historian Jason Pachonsky. So I guess just two big fans. There's a 12-minute interview with the director, an interview with the producer. That's 12 minutes as well. A 10-minute interview with one of the actresses, Lisa Langolis. Uh, there is an 18-minute uh, featurette, it looks like, where Langolis reflects on different collaborations, 12 different. Uh, there's a booklet in here, and there is a trailer. There's also an alternate French-language audio track, because it looks like this movie is very Canadian. Uh, Canadian International Pictures, yes. So, Canadian science fiction film. So, mostly it was Ironside and Plumber that was like, eh, this, this seems like it might be cheesy fun, so. Next we have the other partner label from November that I got. Uh, this is a Rick Sloan joint, so the man behind Hobgoblins and... Vice Academy, and to a lesser extent, Theater of Blood, though The Visitants isn't too bad. Uh, but this is Mind, Body, and Soul, which has uh, Ginger Lynn Allen and Wings Hauser. And so basically that director who makes usually usually enjoyable bad movies, uh, Theater of Blood or Blood Theater, the Blood Theater it's called, that one sucks. Uh, but Hobgoblins is enjoyable, Vice Academy is enjoyable, so yeah. And uh, that cast, you know, Wings Hauser and, and Ginger Lynn Allen, so I had to, had to check this out. So, uh, this is from Culture Shock. Uh, this is from 1992, and it is region-free. Uh, and it looks like this is like a satanic cult, satanic panic type movie. Uh, and it was shot uh, simultaneously with the Vice Academy 3. So, that, that's interesting. Uh, but it looks like it is restored from the 35mm negative. It's got a commentary for, with Rick Sloan, an archival interview with Rick Sloan, archival interview with Ginger Lynn Allen, and a new interview with the art director. So, not a lot of extras there, but it just seemed like this would be probably like a so bad it's good type thing. Oh, and this is the cover of the art itself, which is probably what you saw in video stores at Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, Major Video, whatever your video store was, uh, as opposed to this new art, which is... Not as nostalgic, I assume, for people, but I thought that would be pretty fun, so I got that. And then, because some partner labels, or some partner label titles, were also on sale during this, and because I'm single now, I decided to go ahead and get Debbie Does Dallas 2. Never seen it. I have seen the first one. The first one is a legitimately funny movie, despite being a famous porn. Um... And this one has the same lead actress, who I think only made part one and two and then disappeared off the face of the earth, as far as I know. I think this mostly takes place in a prison. Anyway, so, uh, she's scoring again. Uh, so, yeah. 
Why not? Yeah, I got this. Oh, I can watch it with uh, any of the new friends I've been making. <laughs> uh, but let's see, this is region free. Uh, it's from 1981. It's newly restored from in 2K from the original 35mm camera negative. There is a new audio interview with actress Lisa Sintrice, which is moderated by Casey Scott. I don't know who Casey Scott is. Uh, and a new audio interview with actor Sean Elliott, also moderated by Casey Scott. Um, yeah, it's the sequel to Debbie Does Dallas. I don't know if I need to explain what the plot is, but uh, yeah. So, um, usually their adult titles don't have a lot of extras, so. But I figured, why not? Oh, and then, uh, this is going to be a little twofer. So, first we have uh, Invisible Maniac which I believe is about just an invisible man who is a maniac. I know this is from the same director as Psycho Cop 2 slash Psycho Cop Returns, so people had been expecting Vinegar Syndrome would put this out eventually. Uh, this is the front of the cover, and this is the back. Now, everything about this movie looks like it's some sort of like 80s like high-concept teen sex comedy, but apparently it's, uh, it's not as lighthearted as that seems. Oh, the slipcover's a little tight because this is a 4K UHD. Uh, so anyway, this is region free all the way around. It's from 1990. And yeah, it's about a, a nerdy kid. It's like a little incel kid who wants nothing more than to be able to spy on naked women. Don't we all? But <laughs> that was probably my fantasy when I was like 10 too. So uh, well, maybe not 10, maybe 12. Uh, so he creates an invisible serum. So it's, it's basically, uh, you know, Hollow Man before Hollow Man was Hollow Man. Uh, but let's see what we have here. So on the 4K disc, it's uh, restored from the 35mm camera negative, and there's a commentary track with that director, Adam Rifkin, moderated by a different filmmaker, Elijah Drenner. Uh, there's also a commentary track from The Hysteria Continues. They do a, a podcast there. And then on the Blu-ray disc, uh, there's everything there, plus there's a 32-minute making-of documentary that has interviews with a bunch of people who are involved with the movie. Uh, let's see, there is a single deleted scene, uh, there is an archival interview with the director, but he directed this under his um, nom de plume of Riff Coogan, which I guess was his the, his alias that he used for his like schlockier type movies. Um, that's from a public access TV show called Request Video. It's 12 minutes. There is a music video, 4 minutes, that's called He's Invisible. Uh, behind the scenes footage from that music video, which is 10 minutes. The original video trailer, which is 2 minutes. And that's about that. So, that is... Invisible Maniac. But wait, that's not all. If you remember from back in April, Vinegar Syndrome on their website put up for sale that you could buy an, a translucent slipcover. It, uh, it just had a picture of a hand holding up nothing, and it was a whole April Fool's Day joke. But for six bucks, you could buy it. And there was no shipping attached to it either, so if you just bought it, there was, like, no shipping cost associated. So people were like, are we just paying six bucks to get, like, a $10 gift card down the road? Are you just sending us a pin? Are you sending us a slipcover? Well, the truth is that it was a slipcover, specifically a lenticular slipcover. Now, the slipcover is exactly the same as the regular slipcover, um, at least on the sides and on the back. So... This is the, the movie, and this is the lenticular. But lenticular is like the hologram, and I'm going to have to cover this up for YouTube, but basically when you move it, uh, her clothes disappear, and she's got full-on full on mommy milkers and full-on bush. Uh, <laughs> and uh, well, it's a drawing, so I'm sure you can imagine it without me showing you and getting demonetized on YouTube, but... That's that. And now we go into bag number two, which is the remainder of the Black Friday stuff. So first, uh, a movie I have seen before, but probably not since I was like 15, so we're probably talking like 24 years ago, and that is Freeway. Freeway, I remember that this used to air, I, I don't know, I think it got a limited release in theaters, but I don't remember it being in theaters. But it was on HBO, like, late at night, all the time when I was in high school. And one night, I pre-programmed my VCR, because I'm old as fuck, to tape it off of HBO, and I watched it. And I remember strongly disliking it. And so I never revisited it. But over the years, I have heard people talk about this movie fondly. So maybe I just was too young for it, 
or whatever. I don't know. I do know, I do remember Roger Ebert wrote a very positive review, like a three and a half star review from him. And on this type of movie, that was, that was unusual. And, you know, it had uh, Reese Witherspoon before she was kind of famous. I think this might have been, uh, might have been a little bit before Election, uh, the Alexander Payne movie, or it might have been around the same time. And then Kiefer Sutherland, of course. Uh, but it's basically like a, a redneck tabloid um, contemporary at the time version of the Little Red Riding Hood uh, fairy tale, um, as far as I remember. But anyway, so that's the front of the slip. And then the back has the uh, mangled face of Kiefer Sutherland. And this slip cover is tight as well because this is also a 4K. So, la la la. Uh, this is region A locked, at least the Blu-ray is. It looks like the, the 4K disc itself is probably region free. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Reese Witherspoon plays a character named Vanessa. Her mother's a prostitute, father's an abusive drunk. Uh, and so she goes to live in with her grandmother, so she hits the road to grandma's house. And uh, Bob Wolverton, get it, uh, <laughs> offers to give her a lift, and uh, he's apparently a serial killer, and it kind of goes like that. So, yeah. Uh, so let's see what we got here. This is the apparently the uncut version of the movie. And I do remember Vinegar Syndrome had announced at some point that at like the last minute they found like a long lost uncut version of this movie. And so they were able to put that on the disc. So there's the uncut version of the movie. And this is from 1996. Uh, and it looks like it's about 104 minutes. So yeah, so I, I was probably like 15, 16 when I first saw this movie and I haven't seen it since. Uh, but yeah, so it's been restored from the 35mm camera negative. There's a brand new commentary track with the writer-director. It's moderated by Brad Henderson, who uh, works for Vinegar Syndrome as well as Terror Vision. Uh, and there's also an archival commentary track with the writer-director. And then on the Blu-ray, there's everything that's on that disc, plus there is a brand new interview with the writer-director that's 31 minutes. There's an 18-minute interview with the producer, uh, a 17-minute interview with the editor, a 11 minute interview with one of the actors, Wolfgang Bodison. Uh, there's an interview with the actor Robert Peters, that's 12 minutes. Uh, there's an interview with two different actresses, Monica Lacey and Liana Creel, that's 24 minutes. An archival interview with the director, 15. Archival interview with actress Anda Plummer, which is only 3 minutes. An archival interview with Danny Elfman, who did the, the score, which is only 5 minutes. An archival interview with executive producer Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone produced this? Damn. Uh, that's eight minutes. Archival interview with co-producer. There's a uh, six-minute raw behind-the-scenes footage, so I assume it's just sort of like cinema verite style of what they filmed behind the scenes. Six-minute EPK. Uh, eight-minute soundbite interviews. Uh, original video trailer. Alternate scenes from the R-rated cuts. You can compare that to the unrated, and that's that. So. Uh, so yeah, I, I hated this movie when I first saw it as a teenager, but since everyone seems to like it now, uh, I'm looking forward to revisiting it and see if my opinion has changed radically in the last 20-something years. Uh, and then the, the film I'm least excited about of this because I'm, as I've mentioned in previous unboxings, I just don't care as much about the martial arts films they've been putting out lately. Uh, but this is Burning Paradise. So that's the front of the slipcover. And that is the back, though it looks like maybe uh, Tarantino copied this character for Kill Bill. Um, so I don't know what this is about either, but uh, I haven't watched any of the martial arts films I've gotten from uh, Vinegar Syndrome from the Halfway uh, subscription yet. Uh, but let's see. Government sends soldiers to kill all the Shaolin monks. Young disciple with his master avoid getting captured. So they're on the run. They meet a young prostitute. So they're prostitute in these type of movies. Uh, they get skills with the flying guillotine, and they try to save the master, and... Okay. <laughs> yeah, martial arts stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'll like it. I, I, I don't hate martial arts movies. It's just I'm, I, I don't gravitate toward them as much. Um, but yeah, so this is Region A Locked. Uh, it's restored in 2K from 35mm negative. It has um, the original Cantonese sound with new English subtitles. Commentary track with film historian Sam Deegan. Brand new interview with actor Wong Kam Kong. Uh, archival interview with one of the producers. Video essay by filmmaker Chris O'Neill. Original theatrical trailer. And a 12-page booklet uh, by Grady Hendricks. So, yeah. Probably so 
the one I'm least excited to watch, probably the one I'll watch like dead last after our, I still have to watch Iceman Cometh and Writing Wrongs and a bunch of other martial arts movies, but you know. Uh, and then this is uh, a slasher film, uh, Evil Laugh, uh, which I believe is from the late 80s, and I know it's one of the first slasher movies to be sort of like metafictional and kind of make fun of the genre a little bit, or at least, or at least name check the genre. I believe Friday the 13th is actually mentioned in the movie. Uh, but this is the front of the cover, and this is the back. I had never heard of this movie. Um, the reviews I've read about it, uh, a lot of people don't seem to like it, but it is an 80s slasher movie, and no matter what Vinegar Syndrome releases, the fans are always like, we want more 80s slashers, but eventually they're going to run out because they aren't making more 80s slashers. <laughs> All of the 80s slashers that exist are the only ones that are ever going to exist. So after, once they divvy them up between all the different boutique labels and major studios and whatever, there's only so many that exist out there. Uh, yeah, group of medical students, they're like locked up in a place for the nights and they get brutally slaughtered or whatever. I've heard most of the kills are actually not on screen though, so this might be another, um, what's it, Rush Week uh, scenario that was a, a slasher Vinegar Syndrome put out that had great nudity, but almost all of the kills were off camera. Uh, but let's see, so this is restored in 2K from the 16mm vault elements. Uh, I do love 16mm. Uh, commentary track with the hysteria continues. There is a 78 minute, so basically a feature length uh, making of documentary. And then there's a behind the scenes gallery. So that mostly the that chunky documentary is the, the main drawing for the the special um, special features. It's region free, it's from 1986, it's 91 minutes. So heard mixed things, but I'm still looking forward to checking that out. And then last but not least is the box set, which is Homegrown Horrors Volume 2. I know people were chomping at the bit for another Homegrown Horrors because there was a, a very positive reception to that first one, uh, which had uh, Beyond Dream's Door, which was a, a quite a, a very good movie considering the, the low-budget limitations, and Winter Beast, which has a lot of fun stop-motion shit. Uh, I still haven't watched, um, what is it, Fatal Exam, the, the third movie in there, but I've heard that's the worst one anyway. Uh, but the three movies in here are Hanging Heart, Moonstalker, and Dead Girls, none of which I have seen. But anyway, this is the front of the box side, other side, and back. So I believe Moonstalker is the one that is most well known of this, if I'm not mistaken, but let's just take them as they come. So, Hanging Heart. This is region free, it's from 1989, uh, and let's see, it is about a Young and handsome actor in surrealist theater, uh, and a young woman he's been having an affair with is found murdered, and the police suspect him. And uh, it looks like another woman in his life is murdered, and he's a suspect again. Well, he just has bad luck. So uh, it looks like it's a guy, and someone keeps murdering his love interest. <laughs> that, that's kind of an interesting. Um, that's an interesting setup. I'm, I'm I'm interested to see this. So it's restored in 4K from the 35 millimeter negative. Uh, let's see, there is a 23-minute interview with the writer-director, 11-minute interview with the producer, 17-minute interview with one of the actors, 7-minute interview with another actor, uh, there's a 9-minute interview with the composer, whose name is Eric Ekstrand, not Eric Estrada. There is the original video trailer, as well as a trailer from 2015 for some reason, uh, and a still gallery, so that could be interesting. And then we follow that up with Dead Girls, which looks like it might be a Black Roses, Rocktober Blood type of uh, punk rock movie? I don't know. Region Free from 1990, 106 minutes. Uh, it's about an all-girl rock band. Where they record songs with glorified death and suicide. Then the lead singer learns that the, her younger sister has been hospitalized following a suicide pact associated with one of the girl's lyrics. Uh, and so they stop their tour, and then someone wearing a black coat and gloves begins to start killing members of the band. Cool. <laughs> well, let's see. So this is restored in 4K from the 16mm negative, Love 16. Uh, commentary track with the director, editor, same person, and the writer, co-producer. That's a different person who did both of those. Another commentary track with the historic continues, a 93-minute making-of documentary. So, really full-length documentary there. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Sounds like an interesting setup for a movie, so curious about how that goes. Uh, and then uh, Moonstalker. 
And this is also region free. It's from 1989 and it is 92 minutes. And it's about a deformed and demented man-child, I'm reading specifically, named Bernie, who lives out of an RV with his elderly father. Uh, and the, his father sends him to go steal the microwave. And instead of that, he goes murdering people. Sure, that's a plot. <laughs> uh, that, that, that could be really fun, though. Uh, it's restored in 4K from the 16 miller negative, Love 16. Commentary track with the cinematographer, producer, production manager, and two of the actresses. Commentary track with Sarah Continues. 96 minute making of documentary, and a 70 minute archival making of documentary. So there are basically two feature length documentaries about the making of this movie one brand new and one archival. So what did this movie do to deserve all of that attention? <laughs> yeah, sounds like a, you know basic uh basic uh, jason type slasher maybe a little bit more rednecky hills of eyesy type but yeah so looking forward to that so i'd say out of all of those it's really just the martial arts one that i'm not particularly looking forward to watching everything else whether i've seen it before like roadhouse and freeway or whether i've never seen it before like the homegrown horrors or evil laugh um th this was a, a solid amount of like i want to see it so um December is Partners Only Month. Uh, I'm not going to do an unboxing because I only ended up ordering one title from that, which is Bat Pussy. I know, but it's very funny <laughs> and terrible. And, you know, it was out of print for a while. Now they brought it back in print. So I don't know if there's any changes between Agfa's previous release and this one. Uh, but as a slipcover, so it's all good. And, you know, a lot of people have always complained to Vinegar Syndrome. It's like, hey, you put the subscriptions for the full year on sale during Black Friday. And that's way too much money to drop right before the holidays. Now, that's actually not a problem for me this year because I got dumped in October. So I don't have anyone to buy presents for. So I, I got money all to myself. So, so I could have. Uh, but they're, instead, they're, they've listened to people and they've moved it to the first week of January. Where I guess they're going to, like, every day announce a new title for January. And they're going to offer the full year subscription at that point. Uh, I don't know if I'll subscribe. Um... Because the thing is, if it's going to be a ton of martial arts movies going forward, I don't give a shit about those, so I might just stick to a la carte. Uh, which is odd, because they, they are getting more of these Hong Kong films, and I'm very interested in exposing myself to more Category 3 stuff, the stuff that's like Ebola Syndrome, or like some of the stuff Unearth has put out, like The Untold Story and, and Dr. Lamb and stuff. Um, but I don't know how many of those Vinegar Syndrome are going to put out. Uh, and then a lot of people have complained because Vinegar Syndrome seems to have gone all in on doing 4K releases of movies that have already gotten perfectly good Blu-ray releases from Shout Factory. Um, a lot of those, though, if I don't already own the Blu-ray, like Texas Chainsaw 2, I didn't own the Blu-ray. I only had it on DVD, so I was totally fine upgrading to 4K because 4K is a big jump up from DVD as opposed to, you know, 4K isn't as huge of a jump up from regular Blu-ray. Still jump up, but not as not as large as it is from from DVD. Um, so I'll when January rolls around, I'll look at the price. I'll see what they announce as like stuff that we can look forward to down the road. If I if I'm seeing a lot of martial arts, martial arts, martial arts, I'll say no. If I'm seeing a lot of Category Three, if I'm seeing a lot of horror, or if, if if I start to see some fucking erotic thrillers, because the one genre I really want Vinegar Syndrome to put out more of are 80s and 90s erotic thrillers, stuff like In the Cold of the Night. That stuff is my jam. I love that cheesy goodness. <laughs> so I, I hope they do that, but I don't know if they are. Um, so uh, that is that. Um, as far as other housekeeping things... Um, I got a new webcam, and so because of that, I'm going to attempt to maybe do a live stream at some point, maybe this weekend or, or something like that, um, just to test out how it works, as I've never live streamed through YouTube before. Um, but that'll probably just be like a casual, let's talk about whatever's on my mind movie thing. Uh, if nobody ends up watching me live, then it'll just be a video that people can watch later if they're interested, and if, if someone joins in, they can talk to me through the chat, whatever. Um, so there's that. Um, but yeah, I think that's about everything I got to go. So thanks for watching my uh, unboxing. I know other people have unboxed earlier because FedEx is better in their location or they live closer to one of the distribution centers than I do. Uh, and, uh, you know, happy holidays, everybody. See ya.